guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about the thing that I get questions on every day and that is to share how I lost the baby weight. I gained so much weight when I was pregnant and I feel like, I don't know how it happened but yet I know how it happened. Like I don't know how I let myself get to that point and I was so, so unhappy and I felt like I was living in someone else's body and I feel so much better now and I want to share that with you guys because I know how it can feel. Pregnancy aside, I feel like that was not, I did not gain like the healthy range when you're pregnant. Um, and I definitely was not being healthy either. And so I think it's one thing if it's like you, you were healthy and you made good choices and you just, you still gained a lot, but I didn't, I did not make good choices. So I thought for anyone that's pregnant right now, maybe this would be helpful. Or anyone that just had a baby, maybe this would be helpful. Or if you're just curious, I love watching weight loss videos, so maybe you'd like this video. I've shared a couple a couple videos in the past. I'll have them linked down below. Maybe I'll put together a little playlist. My diet, and I don't mean like a diet, I mean as in like what I eat day to day, has changed a lot over the past two years. So I kind of feel like this is gonna be a long video, but before I get started, there's a couple things, not really a disclaimer, but there are a couple things I wanna put out there. What I'm gonna tell you guys and like what I do, at the end of the day, I follow what I like to call like an 80-20 plan. I've said that before and I'm sure you guys have heard that before, but to me that just means day to day I'm following, you know, the plan that makes me feel really good. I'm eating the things that are going to make my body feel its best, look its best, but birthday parties, vacations, holidays, dinners out, I'll have whatever I'm craving at the moment and I feel like it's all about having those things in moderation. So if I tell you guys that I gave up Diet Coke, I will have a sip of Diet Coke again. <laughs> but just in my day-to-day -day life, I try not to. Does that make sense? So I just feel like sometimes in these videos, everything I say can be taken like really seriously and I don't want you guys to think that I am perfect in my diet because I am so not perfect. I take bites of things every day. It's probably more like 70, 30, honestly, but I just wanted you guys to know that I am not perfect when it comes to this, but this is something that has made a huge difference in my life and the way that I feel like internally, but also the way that I feel about myself on the outside as well. And I just, I feel like myself again, I did not feel like myself when I was pregnant and like right, you know, like those, those last, like, two months right before you have the baby and those two months right after, I did not feel like myself. And it was just something that I knew, I knew I had to lose the weight and I would feel better again. And I do, so I'm gonna share everything with you. First, I thought this video would be a little bit more fun if I shared with you guys like some recipes while we're talking. So, I've got my blender out, my huge Vitamix, and I'm gonna show you guys the smoothie that I like to make like three or four times a week. It's a Fab Four smoothie. So I got the recipe from this book called Body Love. This is by Kelly Levesque, and she is like a celebrity wellness health coach, and she created this thing called the Fab Four. And basically, you include these four, four food groups into a smoothie or a meal every time you eat, and it kind of helps curb, curb your cravings for sugar and kind of keeps you full longer. So I really love making Fab Four smoothies. So we're gonna make one while we talk weight loss. So let me get the ingredients out. Okay, it kind of requires a lot of ingredients, but it's easy. It's easy once you get the hang of it. And anyways, okay, so I'll put the ingredients like here if I don't say them, coconut milk. So I lost about 65 pounds. First of all, I can't even believe I gained that much weight. And that's the first thing I wanna to touch on. If you are thinking about getting pregnant or if you're pregnant right now, obviously do whatever makes you feel the best. And if that means not caring about your health, oh, I feel like I shouldn't say that, but you know what I mean? Like if you wanna eat junk, eat your junk when you're pregnant, it's fine. But just for me, it is something that, not to say I regret it because I think I really learned from it, but it's something that if I could go back and tell myself something, it would be like, oh my God, Alex, why are you eating like that every day? Like it just, I don't know. You know, you always hear people say like, oh, you're eating for two and oh, you're trying to eat whatever you want. You're pregnant and like, okay, it is, but I took it overboard. Like I, I, I went, I don't, I lost 
sight of all of my goals and everything that was important to me. And it's not just about weight, it's just about eating healthy, especially now that I was gonna be in this new role as a mom and I wanted to take care of my baby. And it's really hard to, I guess, like totally grasp the fact that what you're eating is going right to, to your baby. You know what I mean? So obviously I was doing everything like taking my prenatals and eating, you know, some healthy stuff here and there, but it was just that I, I overindulged a lot on the junk. And that's something that I just wish I wouldn't have done so much of. Like just way too many Shake Shack burgers and fries, way too many shakes, way too many like, I don't know, like chicken wings, like Buffalo Wild Wings. I just ate too much junk is, is what it was. Too much chocolate and candy and stuff. And if I could go back, like I said, I just, I just would have watched it. I still would have ate those things, but just a lot, a lot less <laughs> than what I did. It was like every meal, every day was whatever I wanted. And I have never lived like that in the past. Not that I don't eat what I want, but you guys know what I mean. Like, and that's why I, why I said that thing in the beginning of the video. Like, you don't have to take this so serious. This is just me chatting with you guys while I make a smoothie like I would talk to my friend about it. So I just, I was overdoing it. And, um, and then I gained a ton of weight and I wish, I wish my doctor would have told me, um, but they didn't. And I actually went to find a new, um, OBGYN and they did recommend to me they're like hey next time you get pregnant we'll just we'll just watch your weight a little bit more we'll kind of just be more cautious and I was like it would have been so simple if that doctor would have told me but also it's my responsibility to know too okay so I'm not just gonna have kale I'm gonna put a couple berries in there and normally she recommends to put some fat but I already had um, a piece of toast with peanut butter on it like 20 minutes ago so I'm gonna skip the fat because I'm just not that hungry for it so yeah, that's kind of what happened and I didn't work out at all. I've never been the type to just never work out. I always at least do a little bit of cardio or a little bit of weights in my room. Sometimes I would go to classes, go to the gym. When I was pregnant, I just lost sight of everything. I don't, I was very sick in the beginning and I know how hard it, it's hard to remember how hard it was, you know, now. But it was hard when I was like throwing up every day and sick and the only thing I could do was lay in the bed, lay in bed. So I couldn't really work out. I had high hopes too, but I just wish I maybe I would have like gone on walks a couple of times a week, just anything, you know? So if you are pregnant right now, you do you, of course, you do what you want to do and what you feel like is, is best for you and your baby. But that's just my experience. I wish I would have taken my health more seriously and then I wouldn't have had to pay for it as much now you know okay smoothie is done so it's greens it's protein fiber and a little bit of fat a little bit of berries so after I had Julian I was really excited to kind of get back to me you know what I mean like I was excited to kind of get into a new routine of what it was like to be a mom and really enjoy that phase of my life and get back to feeling like myself again and looking like myself again. I just got so swollen and just heavy by the end of it. Like when I was laying in bed, I would literally have to lift my leg into bed, like lift my legs. And now a lot of it was fluid. I actually I don't think I've ever shared this with you guys, but I think like two or three days after we got home from the hospital, we were all asleep. All three of us I got up I had to pee and water just came like gushing out and at first I was panicking because I didn't see that it was water I just was like oh my god am I losing blood what's going on but I lost so much fluid and I can remember like literally after that I was scared for a while because I didn't know what happened but then when I realized it was just all that fluid I finally started to feel better and I honestly started to eat healthier as soon as we got back from the hospital it just it just felt right and I think once once I had Julian I felt a lot more responsibility to be a really good role model for him and to take care of our family and to make health a priority to all of us and it's something that really inspired me and I also just wanted to feel like myself again and I think something that pushed me a lot was really also my job. I think I didn't take a maternity leave or anything like that. I got right back into work as soon as we got home from the hospital. Nothing crazy, but I was working and I did, 
I did honestly feel pressure to lose that weight as fast as I could. So I did things, not anything bad, but I did things like just count calories and try to eat as little as possible in terms of, you know, following a strict calorie deficit and doing Weight Watchers and stuff like that. And I just, a few months ago, finally realized like that just doesn't work for me. And I think for a long time, I thought, the structure really did work for me and I'm not a very structured person when it comes to anything else in my life. So I'm surprised for so long I thought that would work for me. Um, and I did lose weight. Obviously, the less you eat, the, the more you lose weight. So I did lose weight. I do have some videos about what I did during that time. I'll link up here and down below. But basically, the gist of it is I just was following Weight Watchers or counting calories. That's what I did. Like I just was always on a plan, always on a diet, always weighing myself, always restricting myself, always trying and it always felt very temporary like i'm just gonna do weight watchers until i get to this weight and then i'll cancel the membership and i'll be done or i'm just gonna i'm just gonna try keto for four weeks and then i'll be done with it you know like i just kept doing stuff like that and that doesn't really work long term mm. at least for me because like i said it felt so temporary like it felt like I'm gonna give up pizza for like three weeks, but then I can have it again after. And I wanted so badly to find something that just worked for me and my body and something that I didn't really have to think about. And I just wish I could like, you know those people that just love eating healthy and like love being healthy and love working out and they're just naturally in shape and they don't count calories, but they're just, they're like, oh, I just lost some weight and I kind of stayed at this weight for, for years now because I just maintained it by eating healthy. It's like, huh? I don't even know what that means. So basically, those things started clicking in my mind and I what happened was I would stick to a diet for a couple weeks and then I would overeat for a couple weeks because I felt like I was restricting myself um, and I just was like, oh my God, I'm creating Cheesecake Factory. Let's go binge on all these nachos and cheesecake and all this stuff and I'd feel like crap after and it was just a cycle where I'd diet for a couple of weeks and then eat whatever I wanted for a couple of weeks and go crazy and I kind of just ignored it because I felt like I was close to my pre-baby weight and I could kind of hide it in angles and photos and it was fine but then I'd like see some photos or videos of myself and that's the hard part with, with vlogging and filming and stuff like this all the time. You see so many bad angles of yourself and I was like, oh my gosh, is that what I like really look like? And when I look back at pictures, I'm like, oh, I thought I looked like, I don't know. You get, you get the point. So I knew that I needed to change something in terms of a long-term plan. But then there was a couple other like health issue type of things going on on the side too. So number one, I have just terrible sinus issues, terrible allergy type issues. I've been to like a couple doctors and it's something that I need to take seriously, but it's something that it's just constant. You guys notice it in videos all the time. I get comments, I get messages. It's just, I'm constantly plugged in my nose. A lot of times in my ears too always stuffed up and so I wanted to do something eat in a way that would help maybe maybe prevent those allergies or get them under control a little bit I was waking up every single morning so bloated that I looked pregnant I was going to sleep every night so bloated that I looked pregnant but I was used to that like I feel like it's normal throughout the day you get a little bit more bloated but it was like I'd wake up and I would just feel like my stomach was in, like cramping and so much pain. I was so bloated and nothing, like it didn't ever go away. Like I was just always bloated. So I would like buy these cute outfits because the number on the scale was lower, but I was so bloated and that sucked. And also I've told you guys um, quickly that I do get um, ovarian cysts that will rupture. And I, from everything I've read, there isn't too many things like that you can do to help it. But I did, and I've always known this, and I finally put two and two together and I could be making this up, but I always break out like right here. And if you ever like look at a chart that kind of explains why you might be breaking out in a certain area, they always say this area is hormonal. And I've always had those issues with ovarian cysts. So I kind of thought there's something going on where I need to balance my hormones a little bit. So I thought, 
eating healthier would help with allergies, would help with my hormones. I thought it would help with my acne. I'm freaking out a ton. I just thought it would kind of help with everything, including the bloating and all that. Headaches just everything. You know, I just wasn't feeling good either because I was eating so much sugar, eating so much junk, not watching my portions, not eating in moderation at all. So I kind of just decided to switch it up. And that leads me to what I've been doing since I think it was maybe end of January is when I really started to implement all this stuff. So so basically, I didn't really know where to start, but I started kind of researching why these things might be happening to me, how I could help them, and all kind of came back to diet. And I also, at the same time, was really trying to not even really lose weight at that point, but just trying to get the bloating down. So I thought, I really need to overhaul my diet, and it's not for looks, it's not to lose weight, it's because I don't feel good. And if you've ever had an ovarian cyst rupture, you know how painful it can be. And I have not had one rupture since I've started this, and it's been a few months now. I usually get them a couple times a year. Um, and my skin has been totally clear since I started doing this. So I just feel like it's really worked. It's like a glow up for your body to eat healthy. Who knew? It's so simple. All you have to do is eat healthy and you just feel and look so much better. I feel like my skin even looks glowier and healthier. So here's what I did. I cut out gluten. I cut out dairy. And I cut out as much like refined sugar as possible. Um, I did that for a few weeks. And then I was curious. Like, I felt like it was really good for my body, but I was curious as to why. So I took a test, um, like a little blood test, and it told you, like, all the different food sensitivities you might have. And it came back that I was in, sensitive to gluten, a lot of different types of, like, wheat, dairy, a lot of different types of, like, different foods. So many foods. Uh, almonds, eggs yeast it said i had an overgrowth of yeast which i think is why i was bloated a lot all kinds of stuff so i would definitely do that either go to your doctor or find one online where you could take a test to to tell you what your body is sensitive to and it could be causing things like headaches or nausea or you don't know anything and to buy it's so easy to cut out almonds that was so easy it's no big deal for me to cut out almonds and i feel so much better so doing that test helped a lot and i it kind of reassured me that i was on the right path so that's what I did. I cut out gluten, I cut out dairy, and most sugar. And that's pretty much it. And I just try to stick to it. But it's more so about what I can eat rather than what I can't eat. And I don't, I don't think of it in... I feel like sometimes people would think of that in a way of like, oh, well, I can't have cake. It's like, if I want cake, I'll make cake. I'll just figure out a way to make it that's healthier. I made cookies last night. And they're super healthy with coconut oil and maple syrup and gluten-free flour and you know what I mean. Like I'll still have treats, I'll still have whatever I want. I'll just try to eat, actually eat healthy. Eat a lot of greens, a lot of fruits, a lot of healthy meats, fats, healthy fats, avocados, stuff like that. So that has really been the secret to it is just eating healthy like that is the big secret i get messages every day asking how i can share asking if i can share how i lost the last little bit of baby weight because i feel like that's a that's a problem spot for a lot of people it's like those last 10 to 20 pounds is so hard and that's what i did i really just started eating for my health and the weight came off and i have never thought that would be possible for me i always thought like when you hear someone say, oh, I gave up pop and I just gave up coffee creamer and I lost weight. And it's like, what? That would never work for me. I had to be so structured. And I didn't. It was amazing. I literally just started eating healthy and weight keeps coming off. And I do not count calories. I do not track what I eat. I don't care what I eat. I just don't eat the things that make me feel like crap. I eat the things that make me feel really good, that give me a lot of energy, that make my skin clear. It has been a life changer, you guys. And giving up sugar, I think, was the hardest part because I'm definitely addicted to sugar. But let me tell you, just give it up. Like, just give it up, cold turkey. And I kind of went into it thinking, I'm gonna eat sugar again. But right now, it really makes me feel terrible, so I'm not gonna do it. And it really, you don't crave it when you know it gives you a headache, when you know it breaks you out. It's just like, it's not worth it, you know? So, um, I will share with you guys like a typical what I eat in a day. For breakfast, I usually do like a bulletproof coffee. I learned that from KGMTL and Allie and Tony Sabdalis. And I think who else? Like Sam O, Paulina. Those are like my favorite girls to follow. I love all of them. 
they all drink Bulletproof, so I drink Bulletproof in the morning. It's just a great way to get in a little bit of collagen in your coffee and get a little bit of that MCT oil that really keeps you focused and energized. I love it. So I drink my Bulletproof coffee every morning and that's a little bit higher in calories so it kind of keeps you full. And then around noon or one, whenever I get hungry, I will make a smoothie. And she recommends in this book to just eat the smoothie by itself, but I am someone that needs to chew to feel full. So that's why I said earlier, I also make some toast. So I'll make one or two pieces of toast. I'll just do a gluten-free bread and I'll put peanut butter on top or avocado on top. Mine just aren't ripe right now, but that's what I'll do when I would eat eggs before I found out that I was sensitive to eggs. I put an egg on top of one with the avocado. I'll have, you know, some clementines maybe or a banana, whatever. Like I just try to eat real foods, a lot less packaged foods than I used to. Like I do eat this, but in general, I just try to stick, stick to real healthy foods. It's so simple. Like I feel like I wish I had this like secret for you guys and it was like something really easy to follow, but it's just, I've been eating healthy and not eating stuff that I know is bad for me. Like I know Diet Coke is so bad for me. So I just cut it out and instead I'll have like sparkling water with lemon or if I really crave like something that tastes like pop, I'll have a kombucha. So that's lunch. Um, for snacks, I'll do hummus, I'll do uh, like coconut yogurt with granola, I'll do fruits, I'll do veggies. Uh, what else will I do? Sometimes I'll make cookies and stuff like that for dessert or little banana, I like to make like little healthy banana bread muffins and I'll keep them in the fridge, pop them in the microwave if I'm really craving something like super filling that's nice to have on hand. For dinner, I do things like salmon, chicken, steak, usually like a piece of meat and then I do like rice or potatoes or something feeling like that with it. Also with some greens, I try to do a lot of fresh foods, a lot of healthy foods, foods that have vitamins and nutrients and antioxidants and minerals in the foods, like real foods. I try to do as little packaged foods as possible. I eat when I'm hungry, I stop when I'm full, and I was not able to do that before because I was addicted to sugar. So if you are addicted to sugar and you can't Stop eating even when you're full. I know how it feels to like always be hungry. And that's really, that's what helped me stop craving bad food was to cut out sugar. Now I still eat fruit and I'll still eat honey, like real honey or real maple syrup, like pure maple syrup. I don't like down it all day long, but I will have, like I said, I made these cookies. If I put maple syrup in, I put coconut sugar in and I'll eat one or two or whatever I want. So I think those are the big things in terms of the actual foods that I eat and in the way that I eat them, I do follow, I try to follow intermittent fasting where I don't actually sit down and eat a meal until like noon or one and then after dinner at like seven, 7.30, I'm done eating for the day. And that really helps stop the snacking as well. But there of course are nights where Michael and I are watching TV together, watching a movie and I'll have some popcorn or I'll make those cookies or whatever. But typically I try to follow intermittent fasting. It just makes me feel better. This is the least I have ever thought about food by following, you know, this plan of just eating when I'm hungry and eating stuff that I know is nourishing my body. I don't think about food as much. I'm not as hungry as often. Um, I feel satisfied from the food that I eat and I'm just not worried about like I don't feel guilty when I do eat something that I know isn't perfect to plan because I'll just get right back to it in the next meal. So those are the main things. Eat as healthy as you can and we know what's healthy like we all know the Sour Patch Kids and the Diet Cokes are not healthy and that's what I was really doing. So. I switched to eating healthy only to eating when I'm hungry. And one other big thing was I stopped weighing myself. And that was another thing that I was very addicted to in terms of like that diet type of mentality where you're counting calories and you're weighing yourself every day and you're feeling guilty if you take a bite of something. 
I had to stop weighing myself and I did it unintentionally. We were in Florida all winter at our condo. I don't have a scale there. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be good for me if I just don't weigh myself and I'll weigh myself when I get home. And that's what I did. And that's how I realized that I did lose weight. And now that we've been home, I notice I weigh myself a lot more because it's just there. And then it kind of affects your mood for the rest of the day. So if you can step away from the scale and do it only once a week or once a month, it's so much better for your mental health. That is what I did for food. As far as working out, I kept it so simple. It's crazy. I said no to things that I didn't want to do and yes to things I did want to do. When we were in Florida, I didn't feel like going to the gym. The weather was so nice. I wanted to spend time with my family. We were there for only a couple of months and it was a really fun experience to be able to live there for the winter. So I went on walks. I went on walks every day and I love going on walks because Michael and I can talk but also be with Julian at the same time and just kind of spend time as a family. So I walked a lot. We walked on the, like there's like this really long bridge that we love to walk. It's like a 45 minute walk to Starbucks and back. So we would do that. We'd walk around our neighborhood. Going on walks is something so easy and fun. Put your headphones in if you're by yourself. I love doing that at home. It's been a little bit colder here in Michigan, so I have an elliptical downstairs. I'll do that a couple times a week, and I just have fun. Like, I go down there and watch a video, a TV show, or listen to really good music, and it's my me time, mommy time, where I can do whatever I want and kind of zone out for a little bit. It's actually so much fun. And if that's all I want to do, that's all I do. I think all of these things have been really a positive change in my life, a positive change in Michael's life, he's eaten a lot healthier, a positive change in the way that we want to feed Julian as he grows up and starts eating more and more regular food. And it's all been a very positive experience and I think it's something that I'm very happy to be able to share with you guys and hopefully it inspires you to make a change if you're not very healthy right now and you're sick of it and you're sick of feeling sick and you're sick of feeling tired, it'll help. I did want to give you a little bit of advice. When I go out to eat, there is no drama. And that's actually something she talked about in this book. It's like, give up the food drama. Give up the food drama. Like, if I'm out to eat and they don't have something gluten-free or dairy-free, I'll order a burger and just eat it plain. Or I'll just eat the whole burger, if that sounds good to me. Like, I just cut the drama. So when I'm at my parents' house and they don't have anything gluten and dairy-free, I just eat what's there. And it's fine. This is something that I'm going to stick to for life. So cut the drama. That's something that's really helped me too. Hope you guys like this video. Please subscribe if you're new. I make videos on every week about stuff like this, recipes that I love, outfits that I love. This new t-shirt is coming out. If you guys didn't know, I have a little t-shirt line called Good To Be. And um, this comes out soon. So follow that. Subscribe and make new videos every week on fashion, beauty, lifestyle, mom stuff. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.